Africa's largest economy, Nigeria, has experienced relative growth in the last few years. Currency uncertainties during the presidential election campaign had caused international issues for the nation's businesses, but Mohamedou Buhari's win was pleasing to the markets. Challenges, though, still remain for the newly elected president. Here to discuss those is the group CEO of United Capital, Oluwayotin Sani. Um, Ms. Sani has recently received the 2015 Women for Africa Recognition Award for her work in investor services, law and finance, and as one of Africa's foremost businesswomen. That's quite a title. Thank you for coming in. Um, very kind um, of you to be here. New, um, the, the financial planning is one of your um, main areas of strength. Um, how do you see Nigeria post-election now? What are the main challenges that the country has to try and grow its economy like it has been doing for the last few years? Well, I would like to say that um, the prospects for Nigeria are bright. I am very bullish on Nigeria in the medium to long term. You would know that our economy has um, achieved steady growth in the last decade. And um, because of that, we have recently, I mean, in 2014, we became the largest economy in Africa. Now, our challenges, which I will not under you know, underestimate, you know, include the insurgency. So we have security issues in Nigeria. But um, first of all, the security issues are not widespread across the country. They are localized essentially to the northeastern part of Nigeria. And you will have noticed that since the recent favorable election outcome, in fact, in the last couple of months of the current administration, there has been significant curtailment of those th threats. We think that just the success you know, of the election um, is also a factor that would further whittle down the impact of those kind of developments. Um, one of the things that um, the new administration will have to definitely cope with is to actually put an end, so to speak, as much as possible to the threat of, you know, the security threat, the threat of insurgency. They will need to work on the perception of corruption. And I say perception because many times there is nowhere in the world where there is no corruption. But the truth of the matter is that perception is, at the end of the day, is nine-tenths, so to speak, of, of reality. Yeah, you, so, you referred there to the, um, the growth in the economy, and obviously it has gone above South Africa in 2014 to be yeah. Africa's biggest economy. Uh, that's down a lot in part to oil, isn't it? And um, yeah. many people at the moment are saying that Nigeria is too dependent on oil. How big a challenge is that to diverse, diversify the economy and move it away to oil? Okay, I would like to clarify that we actually have a fairly well diversified economic base in Nigeria. We have 51% of our economy composed of services. We have um, another 22% composed of agriculture. That's already 73%. We've got about 8.7% in information technology, 6.7% um, manufacturing. So actually, the oil sector's contribution to the economy right now is just 15.9%. But the truth of the matter is that on, on, on the contrary, government revenues is still over 70 percent dependent on crude oil. So what we need to do is for the government to diversify its revenue base. But the economy itself is already fairly well diversified. But with the um, government being so dependent on those cash reserves at the moment, um, we're seeing a, a cash shortage, aren't we, yeah. um, in Nigeria caused Absolutely. by those low oil prices. Absolutely. Um, how big a challenge is it for the government to get its hands on more cash in the short term? How are they going to get over that? Clearly, it's a live and present challenge, which should not be underestimated. We think that government needs to, first of all, widen the fiscal net. They need to learn to collect more taxes, and that's the truth of the matter. They need to bring a lot of the informal sector. There's a lot that is being done. A lot of the wealth that is being created is right now in the informal sector. A lot of these entrepreneurs are outside the, they're not financially included. So government needs to find a way in which it can, as it were, follow the money across all the areas where the growth is coming from in our you know, economy. It's gonna, and then we need to also talk about agriculture and the prospects for exports. Government needs to put in place regulatory framework and, of course, enforcement mechanisms also to make sure that um, there is support for that area of um, 
Critics of, um, of Good Luck Jonathan's administration have said that the current um, cash crisis in Nigeria was partly caused by his party during the um, election campaigning and wasteful spending and you know over-marketing, um, despite the fact that I think everyone um, really thinks that the elections went very well and very peacefully and very democratically. Um, but there are warnings that the incoming administration will be confronted with a serious economic um, uh, situation when they take office. Just how serious um, an issue is that? I think we need to clarify that the Jonathan administration did not create the oil price crash. We have, like we have said, a government that has over 70% of its revenue from crude oil sales. And the price of crude oil fell to about half, and in, in sometimes less than half of the price. So for any administration, there will be serious challenges. Now, that is not to say that they are not areas where definitely our government could have done better. Now, going to the incoming administration, we think they need to focus on spending more on infrastructure. We need, there are significant infrastructure gaps that will curtail the growth of our economy, that will not allow us to maximize our prospects. So if they work on infrastructure, they work on the regulatory framework and enforcement of the laws. I think we've had great ideas, reform initiatives that have been initiated by the existing government, but sometimes we need the leadership push to push through these reforms till the very end. Power sector, for example, is an area where we need to make gain some traction on the reforms and, and quite a few other initiatives. Final question, and briefly, uh, you've been awarded the 2015 um, Women for Africa Award. Um, congratulations for that. Thank Just you. how many female entrepreneurs are there in Africa, and is it a sector, is it being an, an entrepreneur um, as a woman, a sector that's growing within the continent? You'll be amazed at just how many female entrepreneurs we have in Africa and we have in Nigeria. You need to understand that a lot of women in Africa are breadwinners. A lot of these families are being raised on the income coming from the women. But unfortunately, a significant proportion of our women are not financially included. So there is a lot that needs to be done and can be done to support Nigerian women. And it's one of the things that I'm very, very passionate about. Well, I'm sure you are very much helping that cause. Um, thank you. Olu Watoi and Sani, thank you very much indeed for coming in. It's been great to talk to you. Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure. Thank you.